In this video, I'm going to show you how you can debug your Java EE application in Wildfly using Visual Studio Code. So I'm running Linux, so I installed Visual Studio Code using Snap, and I'm going to go ahead and launch that. The first thing we want to do is install two extensions. The first is going to be the extension pack for Java, which brings in a number of different extensions for Java development. The second is going to be one called Server Connector, which is from Red Hat, and we want to go ahead and install that one as well. Once that's installed, when you're over on your, your file explorer, you're going to now see a Servers tab. And this is where we're going to be able to add our Wildfly or JBoss server instances. You can use this to either download distributions or add existing distributions from your disk. I'm going to go ahead and download Wildfly manually and unzip it and then install it from disk. I think that's probably the most common use case as most applications that you're working on likely have some custom configuration in the standalone.xml that you need to be aware of and probably already have everything kind of configured the way you want it, including data sources, database connections, and the like. So let's go ahead and download Wildfly manually. So I will open up my Firefox browser here, and we'll head to the Wildfly downloads page. Uh, what we want, I'm not going to download the beta, but I'll go ahead and download one of these. Once that's downloaded, we want to go ahead and unzip that someplace. You likely already have this on your system. I'm going to put it under my tools. And now I have my Wildfly 26 installed. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and add that as a server. So we're going to click this icon. I'm going to select no use server on disk and go ahead and browse to my newly installed Wildfly. And then what you want to do is just browse to the top level directory and then select select desired location. Now the first time you do this, after installing this extension, it's going to prompt you for a secure storage password. It's related to the RSP which is this process that Red Hat has created to manage running server instances and securing, storing, I think, credentials in some kind of secure storage. It's a little fuzzy to me, I admit, but I will say no matter what you do here, it's not gonna work, so I just hit escape. And so the first time, you're just gonna get this stack. Go ahead and go back and add it again, and, and you won't be prompted for that again. So again, I'm gonna go back to my directory and select that and you'll see now it comes up with this screen where I can now customize a couple of different things about the installation. I'm not going to change any of the defaults. I'm just going to go ahead and hit finish and you'll see that that's now added my Wildfly 24 installation. So let's go ahead and test that out by starting it. So I can hit start. And you'll see it's launched it, including the admin console and the management console and everything else, and it's already started. We can go back to our browser here and hit localhost 8080, and we have our Wildfly server. So now let's go ahead and go back to Visual Studio Code and stop it. And you can see that it stops the server. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and open up our project. Um, those of you who have seen my previous video on Java EE, I'm just going to open up that example project. And we're going to go ahead and deploy that and attach uh, in a debug mode as well and go ahead and set some breakpoints. So let's go ahead and open a folder here. And I'm already on my project videos example, so I'm going to go ahead and open that folder. And now you'll see that we have 
the servers tab again. If we just give it a second, you just need to wait a, a minute for that server management to launch and it'll find all your, your configured servers. Let's go ahead and start this. So once this server is started, we can go ahead and deploy our application. So I can go ahead and add a deployment. I'm just going to pick the war file and we'll go into the target and pick the example.war. I'm going to say no to specifying any custom deployment parameters. And what we should see is it'll start to synchronize that and then you'll see it start to deploy down here in this window and you'll see it starting the deployment of our example. Because the example project only uses uh, the data source that's configured in standalone.xml by default, we should be ready to go. So we can go back to our browser and browse to our local application. So now let's say we want to go ahead and debug this. Well, we can go back to Visual Studio Code we can restart this in debug mode. And you will see it's going to go ahead and restart the JBoss server. It's going to add the options necessary to get it to listen on a remote debugging port, and it's going to automatically attach to it. So now with it attached, I can go ahead and set a breakpoint so, for example, if we come in here and we go into our uh, employee data table controller, I can set a breakpoint here, for example. Hit refresh, and you'll see that it now hits that breakpoint. I can step over it, and then I can go ahead and continue to run through. Like any good debugger, you've got call stacks, you can add watch variables, you can view the watch variables. In fact, it's just hit the breakpoint again because the refresh was called again. So you can kind of expand these and see what's in that. So that's really all there is to it. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to introduce Docker and maybe even uh, another video or the same video on how to use Visual Studio Code dev containers to set up this environment and streamline your development configuration process.